Okay, I've been doing this show for about three and a half years now. And while it is a challenge every single day, I sort of feel like after three and a half years of doing this, I do have the basic idea about how to get the show on the air. Uh, the staff that works on the show is tremendous. We have great support network-wide here at MSNBC. On most days, on most subjects, I feel like I've got all the support and all the help that I need right here in this building in order to get this show done. But there are certain days, and today is one of them, where I come to realize that I need a little outside help. Um, in this case, I need help from um, fourth graders in public school uh, in the great state of Maine. Let's see. Does this still work? Oh, yeah, that works. <clears throat> this is my secret way, subtle, of signaling to the fourth graders of the great state of Maine that I need your help. If you grow up in Maine and you go to public school there, somewhere around fourth grade, you learn a song. You learn to memorize all 16 counties in Maine by singing them to the tune of Yankee Doodle. Watch. set to the tune of Yankee Doodle and sung by Maine fourth graders. That clip courtesy of the Maine Center for Public Health. So Maine fourth graders, as we agreed before that I would do this in case I ever needed your help, I need your help. Your state has 16 counties, right? For some reason, though, certain residents in three of Maine's counties are being treated right now as if they do not exist. Right now, certain Maine residents in Washington County Waldo County and Kennebec County are being treated as if they are not actually residents of Maine at all. All right, let me, let me back up for a second. So, so far this year, as we've talked about on the show before, the Republican process of picking a presidential nominee has been an absolute mess. It started in Iowa, where the Republican Party first declared that Mitt Romney won the state. Then they declared that it was actually a tie in Iowa. Then they declared belatedly and after some futzing around that oh, actually Rick Santorum won. And then their state Republican Party chairman quit as a result of the whole mess. Iowa was just a complete mess. Florida, also a mess. Not necessarily in terms of counting the vote, but because Florida doesn't even know what their vote means yet. The Florida Republican Party insisted loudly that their primary was winner take all in terms of the state's delegates. Whoever came in first got all the delegates. But that's not actually clear under the rules and it's now being challenged. So who knows who won Florida's delegates? Nevada came after that, also a mess. It took Republican officials in Nevada two days to release a final vote tally after they discovered they had more ballots than voters and they don't know why. Then, of course, there was the Missouri mess. Missouri Republicans couldn't get around to changing their previous plans from earlier years, even though they tried. And so they held a, ended up holding a primary last week, which Rick Santorum won. But that primary, although it was required by state law, was meaningless in the Republican contest. So they're also holding a caucus next month after the primary, and the caucus supposedly is the one that actually counts. A mess? Yes. The Republican presidential primary has so far essentially been one mess after another. And now we have Maine. And Maine may be turning out to be the biggest mess of them all. Maine held a multi-week caucus, which culminated uh, with this announcement on Saturday night from the state's Republican Party chairman. Watch. I'm now going to announce the winner of the Maine GOP presidential poll. And that winner is Mitt Romney. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. According to the Maine Republican Party, whose chairman you just saw there, Mitt Romney won Maine's caucus with 39% of the vote. Ron Paul came in second with 36% of the vote. The margin of victory for Mr. Romney was a razor thin 194 votes. So case closed, right? Ha. Not by a long shot. Remember those three main counties I mentioned earlier, Washington County, Waldo County, and Kennebec County? Turns out that lots and lots of Republicans living in those three counties who voted in the presidential preference poll never actually had their votes counted by the main Republican Party. Republicans in Washington County postponed their caucuses on Saturday because of a snowstorm they expected to hit the area. And even though they are planning to vote instead this coming weekend, that's something they postponed the caucus too, the state Republican Party has already said, ah, in Washington County, your votes won't count. <laughs> they said, no additional votes will be counted. So sorry, Washington County, you don't count. Republicans in Waterville, Maine, which is in Kennebec County, did vote as they were supposed to last week. But their vote total, as you see here, 
shows up, look at the right, on the right there, shows up as a zero in the Republican Party's official results. That's not because nobody showed up in Waterville. It's, because, it's apparently because a contact person in Waterville didn't phone in the results on time, even though the vote took place on time. Even though the state party now has the results from Waterville, sorry, too late, we're not counting you either. Then there's Waldo County. Even though nearly all Waldo County towns held caucuses on February 4th, which was a full week before the main Republican Party announced its supposedly final results, here's how most of Waldo County's votes, look, look, look in the official Republican Party's results list. Zero votes, zero votes, zero votes, zero votes. Why is Waldo County not being counted? Who knows? We contacted the main Republican Party today to find out what the heck happened to all of Waldo County's votes. So far, we have not heard back. Again, the margin of victory for Mitt Romney in Maine was 194 votes. That's called a hair. He beat Ron Paul by a hair. And even though lots of Republicans in three of Maine's 16 counties did not have their votes counted at all, the Republican Party there is somehow standing by Mitt Romney as the winner and saying nothing else is going to be counted. Since the main Republican Party will not answer any of our questions about this fine mess, it's sort of up to you, Maine fourth graders. It's up to you to help us understand why of the 16 counties that you sing about, only 13 count. As we await the help from our fourth graders, let's bring in someone who is in the middle of all this mess. Joining us now is Doug Weed, senior advisor to the Ron Paul campaign. Mr. Weed, thank you very much for coming back. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Rachel. Uh, simple question. Who won the main caucus? <laughs> well, uh, we won as far as getting the delegates are concerned. And uh, right now, until all the votes are cast, uh, the networks are declaring, or the Republican Party is declaring Mitt Romney uh, won. Uh, however, it's interesting, uh, there's a lot more than what you said. Washington County was the only county that Ron Paul carried four years ago. It was his strongest county. And the man who canceled it was a Mitt Romney supporter. That's a little piece of evidence you probably need to add. And the snowstorm he predicted didn't happen. But four years before, when all the Ron people came out and made it his only victory, uh, they had eight inches of snow. And the Girl Scouts met uh, just fine uh, in Washington County while uh, they canceled the uh, the caucus. And in every other instance you mentioned, Waldo County, in each of the cities, in uh, Belfast, in New Portland, in Portland, uh, in Waterville, on every occasion, the votes uh, that were lost were Ron Paul votes, and the person responsible for reporting them were Mitt Romney supporters. For example, in one case, the votes were actually transferred from paper uh, to electronics and to the computer, and the lady doing the transfer was a Mitt Romney person. It could be the costliest victory Mitt Romney ever had, because the Romulans are not happy. The, when you say the Romulans are not happy, does that mean that they are contesting this in Maine and they're going to force Maine to revisit its declaration of a winner here? Or they're going to channel that outrage into something else that they think will help Mr. Paul? I don't know. Maybe a little bit of both. As I said, uh, you know, uh, we feel OK about delegate selection. I saw one of the networks uh, uh, giving... Uh, uh, Mitt Romney eight and giving us seven delegates. Thankfully, that network doesn't get that privilege. And our numbers show that we're going to capture the majority of the delegates in Maine. But nevertheless, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not that the victory is so important. It's just uh, losing it uh, that way is, uh, is kind of tough. When you were here last week, we talked about the delegate strategy of the Ron Paul campaign. And while it seems arcane uh, to a lot of people who haven't been paying close, close, close attention, the basic idea is that in the caucus states, delegates are not allocated directly on the basis of how people vote in the caucuses. The delegates are allocated by a whole separate process. And you essentially think you, for, for the phrase, have gamed the process so that all of the delegates are going to be Ron Paul delegates in a lot of these caucus states, even if the caucus voters themselves didn't choose Ron. Paul. That's the impression that we left a lot of people with last week. I want to just have you reiterate if that is in fact what you're doing. Well, it's different in each state. For example, in Nevada, actually on the first ballot, 
uh, the delegation that's selected to go to the RNC from Nevada will have to vote for the winner of the beauty contest in Nevada on the first ballot thereafter they can vote as they wish but uh, unless the candidate uh, that won releases them which is conceivable the way this <laughs> contest is going but in most states yes it's it's decided the rules are that the state convention will decide who the delegation is and the beauty contest is totally irrelevant and that those were the rules going into it it's not a new thing it's actually how Barack Obama won the Democrat uh, nomination uh, four years before uh, Hillary Clinton carried California she carried New York she carried New Jersey uh, Pennsylvania I don't know if she carried Ohio I can't remember Ohio but she carried a lot of the biggest states but Barack Obama won the nomination because he worked hard in the in the caucus states but the difference is that in worked. the caucus states where he won by large margins and thereby got the delegates that way you're claiming the delegates from contests where you didn't win the vote in the caucus when you were here last week you talked about when thinking that you won Minnesota won Colorado won Nevada uh, that that you may have won all from reading the campaign stuff today that you may have won all 24 delegates in Maine in most of those cases Dr. Paul was not first um, or is not in contention to be first in terms of the way the votes were counted at the caucus so that's a real difference between how Obama racked up his delegates isn't it no it isn't no it isn't the beauty contest in each of those is a, a non-binding beauty contest that doesn't matter if we knew it mattered if, and in some states it does. In some states, like uh, New Hampshire, for example, the delegates were awarded proportionally based on how, uh, they, uh, in the, how they ended in the vote. So uh, we campaigned in New Hampshire, came in second. We contested it. And if the vote in Minnesota was based proportionally on how you, <laughs> how you appeared in the beauty contest, we'd have gotten there and fought. But to say that uh, we're stealing the delegates uh, is not true. The, the Santorum knows the process. Gingrich and Mitt Romney know the process. In fact, it was devised for Mitt Romney. And the way the process is, is any candidate can have people go, vote in the beauty contest, and stay and elect their own delegates to, the, in some cases, the district convention, in some cases, the county convention. It's not a big secret that's been around for a long time. And then if they're patient, they go on to the county convention or district convention, and they elect, again, new delegates to go to the state convention, where they then elect elect the delegates that will go to the Republican National Convention. Uh, we're the people's movement. We don't have big money. Mitt Romney can literally create money because <laughs> Goldman Sachs and Bank of America and J.P. Morgan, uh, they're, they're getting trillions of dollars of electronically created money from the Federal Reserve, and they're the biggest donors that Romney has. We're challenging a very elite system. So we're a, a people's movement, and we don't have their kind of money, and we have to, as, lo we, as long as we play by their rules and win at it, we can keep going. Doug Weed, senior advisor to the Ron Paul campaign. Everybody's still treating this like a big secret, but if you and I keep talking about it, I think people are going to figure it out. Thanks for being with <laughs> us here tonight. Eventually they will. <laughs> I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much.